Hey guys, PD here. Let's talk about how we can go from an average three-star solo to a Giga Chad six-star solo squad wiping slaughter machine. I got not only tips, but more importantly, habits that you can implement into every match that will help you formulate new strategies to win. As always, if you're looking for the best tips to improve your hunt showdown game that you can use in any match, be sure to subscribe to the channel and like the video if any of this helps you. But man, I go into some great detail in this video and everything builds off of each other, so let's get right into this. Firstly, let's have a quick chat about MMR and how it works in the game. One thing everyone needs to know in this game is that hunt giveth and hunt taketh. What I mean by that is one week it could be a 5 star and the next a 3 star. Yes, it's based on how we play, but everyone goes through highs and lows in this game. Look at some of the most popular hunt YouTubers. Psycho Ghost, Nino, Franky, Archie. They have all gone through the MMR hellhole of constantly fluctuating. With that being said, what exactly is hunt MMR? Basically, to sum it up super easily, based on your kills to death ratio on a match to match basis, Hunt will generate you a number that will equate to your quote unquote skill. Take a look here. The red indicates where the majority of players fall into, specifically being this region, meaning most players fall into the four star range on PC. Hunt will then take that number it has given you, put it into a bracketed range, and simplify it by showing you how many stars you have based on where your number falls in that range. Now your stars can and will change depending on how well or badly you do in a match. There is one big multiplier though that comes into play and might even help you expedite this process, which we'll come back to later. So let's go over the first important step into increasing your MMR before the match even starts. And that of course is your loadout. Now with your loadout, all I have to say is keep it simple. That's it. There is no need to go in with an Avto or Nitro with a Dolch as a solo. Fun weapons, yes. Expensive weapons, also yes. Unreliable? Definitely yes. Take a look at this. I was doing some research for my video, How to Aim Better and Hunt, which you can watch after this in the top right of the video here. But while browsing Reddit, I came across a comment from a user that stated, Winfield was the gun that single-handedly brought my account balance from $900 to $40,000 in my KDR from 0.4 to 1.4 in two months now that's a bold claim i thought and you know beauty is in the eyes of the beholder so maybe he was just good with that gun then just a few weeks ago depending on when you're watching this video franke releases a video called how i got to six stars with an underrated sniper lo and behold it's a winfield guys look win is in its name so i would not sleep on it there's a reason why people use it and are good with it it is the signature gun of compact ammo and the signature gun of hunt in my opinion it's reliable it's got good ammo and its stats are the average of the other guns in the game nothing makes it really good but nothing makes it really bad and that's what makes it really good now, if the Winfield is the staple of compact ammo, I would say for solo players, Vetterly is the staple for medium ammo. Sparks LRR or Martini Henry is the staple for long ammo. Romero 77 Alamo is the staple for shotgun. And Crossbow is the staple for special. But look, I'm gonna be honest here. All I played was primarily Romero 77 Alamo, Crossbow, and Winfield. And those guns alone got me to six star MMR. For your secondary, stick to the Caldwell Conversion or Nagant Officer. These are the most reliable secondaries, not the prettiest, not the coolest, but again, the baseline of what is proven time and time again to work for solos. Stick to these guns during your matches. In my personal opinion, I think the Romero 77 Alamo is the best, especially when paired with the Caldwell Conversion. Second to that being the Crossbow. The biggest perk is that if I don't kill them in one shot, it causes bleeding, sending the other player into a panic and allowing me to pull out the Nagant or Conversion to finish them off. 
What's the downside? Definitely the muzzle velocity. It is definitely a weapon with a high skill cap, so if you can't get the crossbow down, I would recommend replacing it with the Winfield. It's more important to play a loadout that you are comfortable with and play well with versus how much damage it does. That's why it's totally up to you guys, but these loadouts are proven to work and have what worked with me. Now I have one loadout that I use consistently during my solo matches, and I even made a video detailing uh, how to play that loadout, which you can watch after this in the top right of this video. Not gonna spend too much time on perks because they are loadout dependent, but there are two perks that I get no matter what, and I recommend you make them your first two go-to perks as well. That of course is doctor and physician. Lowering your time to heal and how much you heal is so powerful as a solo hunter. If you spent the money to bring traps, I recommend the ever so toxic poison and concertina wombo combo, then I would recommend grabbing frontiersmen to add an extra trap of each type and extra health pack to your inventory, bolstering your defense and healing. Other great perks include serpent for stealing bounties and using that dark sight to your advantage, conduit for stamina buff stacks, ghoul for topping off health so you're not wasting health packs, and kite skin to decrease fall damage, increasing your movement potential. One perk that makes the Winfield a perfect choice to bring in a match is levering, so seriously consider that. And obviously, don't waste perk points on non-solo perks like Necromancer or Resilience. Additionally, I wouldn't waste perk points on non-essential, non-benefiting perks like Decoy Supply or Bullet Rubber. But honestly, again, this is all up to you. If you're trying to be stealthy with a crossbow, get Silent Killer and Bolt Thrower, totally up to you. Like I mentioned, the only two that I would say are necessary would be Doctor and Physician, and the others are just my recommendation. Moving on to strategy, I'm basing these strategies based off my own personal experience and what has worked for me, so just know that it might be different for you and every match calls for different things. I wanna reiterate, this is my own personal opinion. I can see people just flaming me in the comments for what I'm about to say, and I understand everyone plays differently and you cannot account for the many what ifs in this game, so if you have any recommendations Recommendations, please tell us in the comments below. But guys, look, I'm not doing anything crazy in my matches. Truth be told, I am not like any of the top tier hunt players. All I'm doing is just playing to the strengths of my loadout. That's why I'm telling you to keep it simple. Using a Romero and Caldwell? Cool. Keep your Caldwell equipped as you approach a compound and use it defensively as you push into the compound. If you see a player that has not noticed you, you don't have to fire. Don't try to force a kill that will put you in a bad spot to defend if you have to. Keep an idea of where they are and continue to push in so you can get closer and use the Romero. Use corners to your advantage, but if you have to push aggressive, the Romero is also a great gun to do that with as well. Same thing with the Nagant Officer if you brought that instead. If you are using the Winfield, please, please, please move spots after shots. If you shoot two to three shots and none land, dude, it is time to move. Try a new angle. Keep the enemy guessing where you are. Yes, accuracy definitely helps in this, but in my opinion, your positioning is much more important in this game. As you're positioning or entering a compound, stay away from any noise traps such as crows, dogs, chickens, horses, and even hives and emulators if you can't avoid them. I do not care how inconvenient it is for you to go around, but this has saved me more times than I can count, and the map is huge, so you have a lot of options to choose from. Take a look here. As I am entering Maw Battery, there are hives, an emulator, and dogs. So I got the trifecta going. I got poison, I got fire, and bleeding all waiting for me. You know, I thought I was safe, but sticking to my rules I made for myself, instead of fighting one by one to get the clue, I just go around the long way, and lo and behold, an enemy hunter that I was able to get the drop on and kill because I took my time. Guys, patience plus positioning is the formula for success 90% of the time in this game. That is how an average player like myself was able to climb into the six star MMR range. Another small general rule that I play by is that I stay off of main roads. Take forests, foliage, and roots with the most cover. You're just asking to get domed if you don't. I know it sounds obvious, but I consistently need to be reminded that because I find myself still being out in open areas. 
Additionally, the main roads that lead into compounds are the most often aimed at by defending hunters. So this will help you get into compound undetected most of the time. This became especially important in five to six star MMR matches. The main difference that I found between three and six star lobbies is their ability to land shots. So, you know, make it harder for them to do so by being patient to land a shot you are comfortable with and reposition safely staying in cover. All right, so I told you earlier that there might be a way to expedite this process getting to six stars MMR. There is a modifier that the game puts on you when you queue for a match. Since you are solo going against teams, it will match you against lower star MMR players to even it out. This has advantages and disadvantages. One advantage being it might be easier to get kills because according to the game, you have a higher skill rating than them. The disadvantage is that the amount of MMR you now earn for each kill is less because of the difference in MMR rating. If you kill someone with a lower MMR value than you, then you only go up a little. But if you die to someone of a lower MMR value than you, your MMR goes down a lot versus dying to someone of the same MMR ranking or higher. Therefore, if you wish to expedite this process, you need to kill hunters of a higher MMR rank than you. Sounds, it sounds easier than done. I, like, I can tell you that. You know, this can be challenging, but if you are able to pull it off, then you will see faster gains of MMR. And the way you can do this is by unticking the enable skill based matchmaking in the bottom right of the main menu screen. While unchecked, the game will still put you against players around your skill range, but prioritizes other players that might have this checked off as well. Potentially, potentially getting higher MMR solos or teams to take a shot at. Speaking of teams, if you're looking for a team to play with to help you with increasing your MMR and getting better at the game, then join our Discord. Link is in the bio below. We have PC and console players eager to help you out. And if you made it this far, man, you are a real one. Thank you so much. If you made it this far without skipping, comment bing bong ding dong below to confuse the hell out of the other people watching this. Like the video if any of this helped you and subscribe for more hunt content like this in the future. I will see you guys in the bayou. Peace.